Hello, Reward Clinicians, this is Ali Nasse, and this Friday's question comes to us from a dentist in Copenhagen, Denmark, Dr. Kenneth Jordy. Dr. Jordy asks, since BC sealer sits in four to six hours, how can I restore a tooth obturated with hydraulic condensation with a bonded core immediately after obturation? Now, this is a great question with a lot of clinical relevance. So, let's get to it. We all know that following endodontic procedures, timely restoration of the tooth with a definitive coronal seal in the form of a filling or a core buildup and a crown is of paramount importance to the long-term success of that case. Now, whether a root canal treated tooth should be restored immediately or with a definitive restoration is really a function of how confident the operator feels about the quality of the root canal treatment, the clinical requirements of the restorative material, as well as some other logistical considerations. But more often than not, when endodontic objectives have already been uh, achieved clinically and successful results are expected, Restoring the tooth immediately after the obturation is the best way to ensure the best coronal seal has been achieved aseptically while the rubber dam is still on. Of course, uh, different restorative materials have different clinical requirements. For example, dentin bonding is inhibited by fresh eugenol. Therefore, if you're using a zinc oxide eugenol based sealer, you should either use a non bonded core material like amalgam. Or if you definitely want to bond your core material, then you should reappoint the patient to a following visit, a second visit, a couple of weeks later, uh, so that the free usual has already uh, been depleted during that time period. Of course, ZOE-based sealers have additional poor characteristics, which is why I generally recommend using a non eugenol based sealer, so that you don't have to worry about all these types of dilemmas. Effective cleaning of the excess cement from the pulp chamber following obturation is also really an important consideration. Uh, your quality of the bond is really affected by the quality and cleanliness of the dentin on the frication floor and the walls of the pulp chamber. Using harsh chemicals like chloroform or other solvents to remove excessive gutta percha and resin sealers during thermoplastic techniques will leave a thin film or residue of this material on the dentin walls that may affect the bond. This is why using hydraulic condensation and hydrophilic sealers like bioceramics is helpful as it will only require water to wash away the excess cement and, and the, then whatever is left can be cleaned effectively using ultrasonics before the uh, restoration is placed. But when using hydraulic condensation, using cone matching, you may be left uh, with the root canal orifice having a gutta percha surrounded by a thin film of ANSET sealer. And the cement can spill out and potentially mix with your bonding agent when you're applying it uh, with a microbrush. So this is in fact Dr. Jordi's question. And here finally is my solution to it. During hydraulic condensation, we often sear off the gutta percha exactly at the orifice level of the root canal. But if we were to sear off one or two millimeters above the orifice, the remaining, the remaining molten mass of the gutta percha can then be condensed down using a large a uh, shoulder plugger, like a number 10 plugger, immediately after that molting uh, is done. So this creates a gutta percha mass that can then be spread around and condensed down to cover the whole sealer and the whole orifice of the canal. And the best analogy for that would be almost like a nail head, where the head uh, is basically almost acting like a lid over the gutta percha and the, thus um, sealing the, the orifice of the canal and preventing uh, the uh, sealer from getting washed out during your ultrasonic cation of the, of the chamber. So the gutta percha uh, surface will act as protection like a lid. At this point, then your root canal orifice uh, would look like any of the historical techniques with only gutta percha showing at the orifice, uh, like in these pink dots. Once the chamber is fully cleaned, then uh, with ultrasonics and water, you can then proceed to etch, bond, and then place your reinforced composite core material, uh, such as the endosequence core material, and uh, have no problems with the bonding at that point. Of course, if you prefer to backfill the root canal, you can also use your BC pellets with similar results. But personally, if I can do something with one less step, I always prefer that route. 
Now, the benefits of having a non eugenol based hydrophilic sealer with an extended working time are numerous. The trick I mentioned helps you address this important question of preserving the optimal bond quality to pulpal floor and the walls during the same visit and then under the rubber dam using this particular sealer. Remember that your coronal seal and the long-term outcome of your cases is a direct result of the quality of your bonding techniques. With proper bonding and coronal restorations free of microleakage, your endodontic cases will have the highest chance of success in the long run. For Real World Endo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this information helpful.